I have here a very interesting tree. Very often you come across a difficult problem and you want to just put it off and put it off because it is difficult to solve. This is one of those instances. I tell you why it is a difficult tree. The tree is difficult for one main reason and it's because of this poor tree. This tree I've been growing on the nursery maybe for the last 15 or 20 years. It was a small buvernensis grafted tree and it's become big like this. And I think it had another trunk which you can see here which I cut off at some point and let one of these branches grow from here. Not only that, there was a bit of wire which was embedded here so it's made a bulge here. So that's made it uh, looking bad. So with this tree, there is a beautiful bonsai lying somewhere in the middle, but I've got to find the solution for the tree. So with a tree like this, the easy way out would be to get rid of this. Cut that off. I'll show you what I mean. So using my bad trick, if I get rid of it, it can be made a nice slanting tree with just one side and then we can just wire these branches. But I'm convinced that I can do something with this part of the tree. There is something inherently beautiful about this. So let us see what we can do. As it stands, the branch going that way looks off. I need to bring it back on itself so that it is a much tighter formation. It is possible to bend it, but how much I can bend it remains to be seen. So to bring it right back without breaking it, and I've mentioned before that Bouvernensis trees are not like the ordinary Scots pines. This is a Scots pine, but a dwarf Scots pine. They are very brittle in the branches. So in order to bend it, I will have to do all sorts of tricks. This part is probably a bit too difficult to bend, but I think this is possible to bend. So let me see what I can do to bend it and bring it back on itself. Okay. One of the ways of bending is by splitting the trunk. So I'm going to use a trunk splitter and see if by splitting the trunk I can get some movement on the branch. Now this is a huge branch splitter. It is a huge Japanese branch splitter. I don't know, you can see it's made in Japan. It's not often I use it, but there comes a point when I do use it. And this is one of those instances. So I'm going to try and split the branch here to see if by splitting it, I can get some movement. I was once told by a doctor who's a surgeon that these sort of tools are used for breaking bones or resetting bones. Not that I'm going to try and do it on someone. But these sort of tools are used in surgery. So if any of you who are doctors watching it, you can perhaps give me some feedback. Okay, I've bent that. Now let me get rid of some of these 
proud bits sticking out. Let's see if that makes any difference. As we say, if you don't try, you won't know. Remember last year, or was it maybe 18 months ago, I did a latch which was dead straight. I did it for my friend Josh who usually does the filming and he tells me that that latch is doing extremely well. thing which was absolutely straight, we were able to bend it into a nice S shape. I will show you that tree again. Okay, there is some movement I can feel. Now I've only split it in one plane, I mean I've done it this way. I'm now going to do a quadrant, that means I'm going to split it the other way at 90 degrees and see what happens. Ah. This tool is so sharp it may look rusty but the blades are almost like a razor. I hope the sound of the rain doesn't spoil this video, but I feel I have to do something because it's been raining so much, the rain never stops. I'll never get a chance to video if I stop doing it. I've got a smaller brown splitter, but I don't think the small brown splitter is man enough to do the job. Okay. Now let's see if it can bend a bit. You can see how it's moving. Can you see? Can you see the movement of that? It is absolutely flexible by doing that. I couldn't even move it an inch, but by doing that branch splitting, I'm able to get movement from that branch. So the next thing to do is to put a piece of wire on that. Uh, <coughs> this bulge worries me, so I may have to get rid of some of that either by carving or whatever but I will deal with that in a minute but I think I can do the anchoring by putting the wire into the into the soil and then getting it to bend okay so I'll get some wire so I'm going to use a wire something like seven or eight mil and looking through my pile of used wire I came across this which I thought was copper wire for, to begin with. You see, there's copper corrosion there. And this is ordinary aluminium wire. But when I started cutting it, I realized that this is some of my recycled electric wire. And in, inside here is that mineral. It's an insulation. For those of you who are electricians will know that many years ago, about 20, 30 years ago, there was a wire called MICC, that means mineral covered copper wire. So can you look closely and see, there are two cables in there. There are two cables in there. And this is the insulation, the white insulation. 
So this is just electric wire recycle that I'm using. So I'm a great one for recycling. So there's no harm using it. So let's try and put this piece of wire. I'm going to save these little branches as well. Okay, so let's see if this does the job. Okay, I just thought that because I split it so much, I should probably tape it or put raffia. So let me put some tape around it. Tape and raffia are all the same things. You can use whatever you wish. As you know, I'm a great one for improvising. I don't insist that you have to use this or that just because everyone else uses it but this works I don't think you necessarily need to use it but it may help it I think it may help it from splitting and not only that because I've exposed the wood it might lead to some infection, although I'm not a great believer in these trees getting infected so easily. These pines heal themselves. And because it's a pine, the resin from the pine actually acts as a sealant. So the resin seals the wood. So now let's try and put the wire on and see if we can get a bend out of it. These three little branches seem to be quite promising. I will use it in part of the design. Now mind you, when I go about creating these trees, I don't have any fixed ideas to what the eventual design will turn out to be. I just go with the flow. It's my way of doing things. Other people like to draw an image and then try and design the tree to fit that image. Each one does their own way, but this is the way that works for me and I'm quite happy to do it this way. Okay, now let's put a double coil because I'm fairly sure that one piece of wire is not sufficient to bend this trunk. The key part of this tree is really getting this odd branch to bend and make into something nice looking. Once I can bend it, the rest will be easy, as they say. You can hear the robin singing here. Years ago I had a robin that used to follow me around, but I think that poor robin died. 
I don't know how long Robins live, but this fellow seems to be living in this greenhouse and hopefully he'll come close and become a companion again. Okay, I put that on. Now let's see if I can bend it. What we call the moment of truth. Let's see what, which way I can bend it, this way or that way. There's nothing rehearsed. Should it break and snap, that will be it. I will have to just accept it for what it is. Bent it that way, I don't know whether I can make it come up on itself. I've got it to do that so far rather than go out. hasn't broken so far. Okay, the next stage is trying to bend that part. I think I can do something with that. So I'm going to get another branch splitter. I'm going to use a smaller branch splitter and I'm going to split this section because I'm going to bend the top part. As I said, the Bouvernensis is brittle. If it was a Scots pine, it would be far simpler and easier to bend. Okay. Thank you. 
Improvisation is the name of the game. Just improvise and do what works for you. Okay, I'm trying to save these three skinny branches as much as possible and I'm going to make a head with this. I've got quite an interesting curve, can you imagine? If that was going straight out, I've managed to get this curve here. I bent this and I bent this. So I've got two bends there rather than one straight branch. So let me work on this and then this side is easy. This I think just by cleaning it up and wiring virtually all the branches, I should get a very interesting result. So this is not the problem. The problem is on the other side. While I'm slipping away, I'm thinking and seeing what I can do. There are branches like that. Can you see how this triangular shape can be very easily created by doing this? So this is not difficult. This is not difficult. Very simple. Okay, let's concentrate on this side. I'm going to get some wire and do some wiring. So we switch off for a while while I... So oh, you can see that I've put a coil of aluminium. Uh, this is four and a half mil wire. And I'm going to give more shape to this. I can make use of these little branches which I'm sure will be very, very useful for the design of the tree. This is just the anchor point. For some reason, I'm more or less resigned to having this as the front, because this side somehow looks better than this side. This side is a bit ugly there. So I'm aiming to work from this side as the front. So going with the flow, you see how the curve is going this way. So I'm just going to emphasize the curve more. You notice that when there's a possibility of breaking, I grip the branch with the palms of my hand so I can feel it cracking. And when I feel it cracking, I should stop. Bender. Tightening the whole package, as it were, and making it more compact helps with the design.
And then I'm going to wire these branches to give this sort of effect. Can you see, I've got a small bonsai here now, like that, with those gangly branches. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put some more wire on these, and then I'll show it to you again. Okay, so I put wire on uh, <coughs> one, two, three, four of the branches. So let's give it some shape. I have every faith that they will bud back. These long shoots may appear long now, but give it a couple of years, it will bud back nicely. So what was a gangly part of this tree with these three or four very insignificant branches has become pretty interesting. That's why I was reluctant to discard it. The easy way out would be to just cut it off and forget about it and just concentrate on the right hand side. But I was determined to use it. So let us see what transpires. So you can see it's got the makings of a potential bonsai just on this side alone. Just this side alone. I'm going to do a little more. A bit more refining and I'll be there. So i leave that there. So that is potentially interesting. Worst come to worst, if it doesn't fit, I'll have to modify this side accordingly. So let's now look at the right hand side. It hasn't taken that much time. I've only spent like 25 minutes so far, and I've already got there. So now I need to make this side much more interesting. And this side could end up something like this. So I'm going to now have to design this side. rather congested on this side, so I have to reduce it a little bit to get an interesting crown. So this is what I'm going to wire. So the rest is just wiring. You can see what is happening there. The rest is just wiring. So let me wire some of these and then show it to you again. And then we see how it relates to this side. Okay, so I will leave off for a while while I do some wiring. We have created quite a difference. It is beginning to look like a tree you would find growing in nature. With the twin trunk coming quite high like this, you often find pines like this. So I need to balance this side with that side. It's a bit too dense there. So I don't know whether to use some of these branches to make it fuller like that or not. I put a wire all the way to the top so that I can give more twist. Can you see how this is twisted like that? That effect I want. And I'm going to wire a little more. It's a bit too dense at the back so I'm not sure whether I need all of that. So that part I might, see if I use that it might make it too dense looking. So I might have to get rid of that or thin that out quite considerably. So there's quite a lot that has to go. So like these branches, I certainly don't think I need that one. So I'm going to get this one off. Look at that. That's the first branch I've cut. That's the first branch I've cut. 
And then these ones I can bring tight like this, but probably this side don't need, so I'll get rid of this one. This one could possibly come here like that, so I'll wire this in place, so I'll keep that. But this I probably don't need. So I'm going to cut that off. This also, I think is superfluous, I'll get rid of that. And because I've got such a lot there, I probably don't even need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. And I'll wire these flat to see how it looks. And then if it looks right, I'll keep it. If it doesn't look right, I'll get rid of it. So I think it's now just a question of wiring all the fine branches like so. Can you see the effect? Look from here. And then you can get a better idea as to what the tree looks like. So it's all a question of doing fine wiring. So that I will do later on after I've put all the fine wires on to arrange them into pads and then I will show you the thing again. All right. So I've been working on this tree for the last couple of days and you will have traced this, the progress of this tree. So this branch which is coming way out like this, I've brought it back in to mirror the effect of it. So it's like a twin trunk. And although it looks a bit sparse here, it will fill out. This is the main side of the tree. But I feel that, I know that at present, this is more dense than this, but this will fill out. But looking at the tree, all the branches are in the right place, but there's still too much, I feel. So this is the culprit over there. Let me bring the bag and show you the Peter Chan's bag trick and see. If you look from the front again, if I put, put the bag there, I want to maybe get rid of that. So it doesn't look so cluttered. The others are okay. So I'll do it in stages. So here goes. Take that off. Take that off. Take that off. Oh. In fact, I haven't taken much of this tree at all. From the whole tree, this is all I've taken off so far. That's all. Not a great deal. So I've just done wiring, a lot of wiring, made the pads. This I wasn't sure, but I will keep it. And I might gin that, but if I don't gin it, I'll just cut it off completely. So that is how the tree is shaping out. I could even, because this is repotting season, I'm going to get a nice mica pot with a Tease the roots, put it in a micropot, and I'll take a picture again when it's all potted up. So there you go, it's almost 90% finished. I'm just showing you the root ball. These trees have been growing on the nursery for the last 15 to 20 years. And in those days we used to use a peat type soil. And I just used to uh, put fine potting grit. We used to use a lot of grit called Chichester grit. So Chichester grit and peat was the type of compost we used. And the tree thrives in that. So it's a bit pot bound, but look at the roots. Very, very healthy root. And I'm now going to pot it into a mica drum pot. I chose two pots. And you've always got to put the tree against the pot, so I've used the slightly smaller one because the big one would look too big. So when I've potted it up, I will show it to you again. So here we are. I potted it in a mica pot. I think that's the right size for it. And this is the tree. The angle of planting was quite critical just a few degrees either way might not be quite right. The tree is not perfect, as I say. This bulge here worries me. I will probably carve it down or we'll do something with it. But from what was almost an impossible tree with the left hand branch, 
sticking out almost like 120 degrees. I brought it back to about almost 45 degrees. So it's like a twin trunk, not quite a literati because a literati would be more sparse than this. But nevertheless, it's a nice tree and pines do grow like this. In the British countryside, the Scots pines have this habit of growing. So I hope you've enjoyed this video.